Thank you for joining me. LEA Podcast presents a special series dedicated to the IACA elections. With me today is Mary Berticelli, who's running for re-election for IACA president. Mary, how are we doing? Good, thanks. How are you doing? I am doing very well. Can you give the listeners a quick bio about you, where you're from, what your current job is, any associations with the IACA? Sure. Um, my name is Mary Berticelli. I'm an Arizona native, although I've lived and gone to school on both the East and the West Coast. Uh, I used to teach English at an English school in Tokyo, Japan. I currently work as the Crime Analysis Unit Supervisor for the Scottsdale Police Department. I've been here for almost 20 years, but I had my start in the field working for the Washington Baltimore Haida as a researcher and then assigned as an intelligence analyst for the Baltimore Police Department. I've been involved in the IACA on the conference committee as a mentor, and I am the current president. Why do you want to be reelected as president of IACA? Well, I would love to be able to continue to serve as the president of IACA, mainly because I still have work to complete, and I really hate to leave something unfinished. Uh, the current board spent a great deal of time and energy researching what it is that our members really want from our association. And then we took it a step further and we completed a formal strategic planning process. So now we have this roadmap of where we're going, what we want to accomplish, and how we will get there. And I'd really like to be there to see it through. And so uh, this probably goes hand in hand with that. This next question then is, what is your five-year plan for the IACA? Yes, as I previously mentioned, we now have a strategic plan for the association. And the three strategic directions are all broken down into steps that take place over the next two to three years. Um, so just as a reminder, what we ended up coming up with for our strategic directions uh, during that planning process was first to expand the influence of crime analysts, second to maximize the website technology for member services, and third is to initiate a sustainable model. So once we get there and accomplish those three strategic, strategic directions, uh, I'd like to kind of survey the membership again and see where we are, how our priorities have shifted, and, and then probably complete another strategic planning process. So by the end of this year, hopefully beginning of next year, uh, we're hoping to have a new website that will better meet the needs of the membership by functioning properly on the back end for some of our most important committees like training and membership and certification. And that re they really rely on the website and, um, and there's some things that just aren't functioning right for them and that are creating a lot of extra work and duplication. So we really need to get that fixed. And then I'd also like to make it a little more, whichever company we end up going with for our, our new website, We'd also like to make it a little more easily searchable for our members and a little more intuitive. With that third step with the strategic plan, the model, could you give a little bit more information about that? What, what exactly is it? What's the goal of the model? So initiating a sustainable model includes um, streamlining our volunteer process, uh, increasing international, like the international voice and representation on um, throughout our committees, and exploring, exploring a more su sustainable model for the future. So one of the things that um, came up during that was looking at, do we need to increase our membership dues? Um, do we need to have any full-time um, positions on the board? And considering, um, trying to take into consideration uh, how we wanna grow. What are your plans to help IACA members that have been impacted by the COVID pandemic? Um, well, that's a great question. We're currently just a few days out from our, uh, the start of our annual training conference in Las Vegas. And I can't tell you how excited I am to see everyone, <laughs> uh, all our members and all my IAC friends again in person. Our committees um, last year during the pandemic performed like head and shoulders above any other comparable associations. And I'm really proud of what we were able to provide to our members last year. I really, I was one of the, the holdouts about canceling the conference. And I really, to the last possible time that I could, um, held out the hope that we could have that conference. But when I realized that that just wasn't going to be something that was going to happen, um, 
we went ahead and, and said, okay, if we can't have the cancel or if we can't have the conference, we can't just cancel. So we have to do something. And I think a lot of other associations just sent out notices about their trainings being canceled and the logistics of how you're going to get your money back. And, um, and we really didn't do that. Like we just, that wasn't even an option for us. We were like, we have to do something in place of it. And we did, and it was huge. So last year uh, we ended up training almost 3,400 people between all the three free webinars that we held in place of the conference. Um, we, our training committee was really on top of everything. And we transitioned a lot of our classes to an online, like a live online format. And we partnered with um, Total Intelligence Group and we offered the I2 webinar series. Uh, we ended up delivering seven webinars in Spanish and we had, I think another five free webinars. And we really embraced adapting early on and that's continued throughout this year. And it's, it's really changed um, kind of the course of our power training has, has expanded and progressed this year. Um, we also have a really cohesive board and, and committed individuals running our committees. And I think the fact that we all get along so well and we really work well together in terms of brainstorming is gonna be what is gonna help us get through the rest of the, the pandemic. Your answer there goes hand in hand with this next question. IACA has 4,000 members, and but there's not everybody participates. There's a, there's a pretty big section of people that don't go to the conference, don't go to any training, don't vote, don't post anything on the forums. So what are some of your ideas to get more membership involvement, more membership participation with the association? Well, one of the things that when I first took office, I really wanted to make sure that we we changed the website to make it more transparent and more uh, easily identifiable. If you went to the website to, for the process that's involved to become more involved in the association, if, if that makes sense. So what we ended up doing was we took that committees page. It just used to be like a list of the committees and we made it more into more interactive and we put... Um, not only were all the committees listed, but we have a description of what they do. If you click on the committee, it takes you to a different page with the contacts. But on that main page, if you want to contact that committee chairperson, their email address is right there that you can click on it and send an, an email to them immediately. So that's that's one of the things that we've done to try to increase participation is just to make it a little more evident and clear how to become involved in the first place. So what was the other part of your question? Oh, the other thing we do is that we, we all talk to our committee chairs and we, so with some of the committees, we increase the number of volunteers in certain areas where we needed more help in order to make the processes more efficient or to better recruit people to become involved. And then as a board, uh, the other thing that we're doing is talking, we spend a lot of time trying to kind of get out there and um, talk about what the IECA is. And we're doing that with uh, foreign dignitaries, with directors of master's programs at universities, um, with detectives. We're going out to other associations and conferences. Uh, like, for example, Kristen was just at, at the International Homicide Investigators Conference, um, telling them who we are and what we do. And uh, we're trying to apply to present at other conferences and to just get our name out there a little bit better so that um, so that maybe that'll benefit our members in terms of when these people go back to their agencies, they're going to go, oh, I have a crime analyst here. I should get to know him or her better. Um, and maybe that will help them become more involved in our association as well. So you mentioned as part of the model for the, the step three for the strategic plan, increase membership dues. And this is a, something that's been of interest for me for a while because the dues are $25 a year. And that's been the same since we, the IACA began. So what was the conclusion? What's your thoughts on increasing dues? Well, that's something that uh, I, I think we had a lot of people um, kind of on, on both sides of the fence with that. I, I don't want to increase dues right now. Um, I think that with a pandemic, it's, it's, it's been hard enough on a lot of agencies and a lot of agencies are cutting back in terms of training and um, and some some agencies lost their crime analysts since we had a lot of people who lost their jobs last year. Uh, I just don't think now is the right time to go, hey, let's increase the dues. 
So that's that's my opinion. However, it did come up during the strategic planning process, and it definitely is something that's on our radar. And um, the people who are assigned to that strategic direction are going to in, investigate that a little bit further. But um, one reason that I just don't uh, right now, in addition to just the pandemic and and kind of the economic hardship that that might cause on certain people to raise that, is that we need to get the website process changed over before we think about increasing dues, and um, and that's because we do. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the back end with the website, depending on which country you're in, or country codes, and there's just a lot of coding stuff on the back end that's, um, I don't want to invest a lot more in the current website that we're with when that's, when then we get the new one on and on board, um, that committee that's been assigned to that strategic direction, they'll present all their findings and kind of give us the, some guidance on where we should go from there. So. Um, I'm just not right now. I don't think it's the right time to do it right now. But uh, one of the other reasons for me too is that we're we're a nonprofit organization, and, and for the most part, we're doing okay. And um, if we do, my opinion is we do decide to increase dues. I'd like to develop some sort of a plan for um, telling the members, hey, with with that increase in dues, we're going to enhance the value of IEC membership by doing X, Y, and Z, so that they'll go, oh, okay, I, I see why, you know, we're doing that. And I know inflation has made it go up and it should be probably twice what it is, but I think that would be a big jump for all of our members. And, and, um, and it's, uh, we, you get, you're getting a lot of value for $25 right now. And I'm just, uh, I'm comfortable with it staying that way for a while, but whatever the, the strategic planning, um, committee, the, the committee members that are assigned to that direction, whatever they come up with, we'll, we'll consider it as a board and kind of go forward with that because I'm sure they might come up with something that would, I'm open to having my mind changed with it. But right now, I think it should stay at the $25. So in talking with a couple different board members, uh, both past and present, the idea of how much time and effort the, the board member is giving to the IACA in terms of volunteer time. And the, the expectation is 10 hours a week, but that can sometimes be well beyond 10 hours in a given week, as you, I'm sure you <laughs> understand. So yes. the idea is, well, what if the IACA would uh, maybe create a more permanent part-time position, an executive director, if you will, similar to what IALEA has done to alleviate some of the day-to-day operations of the association. Certainly realizing that IACA has always been a volunteer-only organization, but it does seem that, you know, there's some people that may be intimidated not to run for the board because they know it's so much of a commitment. What do you think about the possibility of the IACA hiring a, an executive director? It's not a simple question. Mm-hmm. The, I, I, I can see the benefits of it. Um, it just, because you, you mentioned, you know, you know, it's, we're supposed to be like 10 hours a week. And I can tell you it's, it's never just 10 <laughs> hours a week. Um, but part of the issue with that is that we have to go back and look at our, like our bylaws and our articles of incorporation in the state of Kansas state that we're an all volunteer association. So we'd probably have to go back and, and look at our, our status with the IRS as a, as a nonprofit that might change. So there's a lot of, it's not as simple, like, yes, no, we should do it. I I can see some of the the pros of that. Uh, One of the things I think you have to consider is uh, when you mentioned like IALEA has an executive um, director and on their board, um, they also have an administrative assistant. And so I think we need to kind of, and that's, that's part of what we're going to be looking at in initiating a sustainable model, that one strategic direction, is we're going to be looking and examining if that's a feasible option for us. But it, it's more than, it'll take a lot, of, a lot of steps because we might have to incorporate in another state, and that would mean changing a lot of things. Um, and we'd have to explore just like legally if we'd be allowed to do that just because of the way we're incorporated in the state of Kansas as an, as an all-volunteer and as a nonprofit. So we might have to, that might change our, our status with the IRS. So there's just a lot of things that go into that. And it's something that we'd have to research uh, further, but I'm not a, opposed to it because I think in the future that if that if that would work out for 
for our association um, that it would be it would be good to have uh, either one or or perhaps both of those positions uh, be part of our association in terms of um, if you had an administrative assistant, they could help a lot with um, a lot with membership stuff and um, the executive director position um, could be kind of more on that with our first strategic direction. I see that kind of being something that they would be able to help with in terms of um, trying to, to make sure that the position of crime analyst is kind of highlighted and becomes more influential in the field of law enforcement in general. So, um, so I think it, it might be a good idea for the future, but it's, again, it's something that's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a, a process behind that. And, um, and I'd like to do a, more research on that. And we're, we're already kind of in the process of trying to get um, some of those position descriptions from other associations and what the salary ranges are and what's expected of it. But that's another thing where if we're going to, like, just the same as what I was saying with uh, raising the dues, if we're going to be using our dues to to do something like that, I want to make sure that there's like clear cut expectations for those roles, um, because the role of administrative assistant is really different from the role of executive director. So, um, so those would have to be the position descriptions would have to be very like clearly defined, and know what the membership could expect from professionalizing some of those positions that are that are on our board to kind of augment what the board's able to do. Should you win re-election in your next term, how would you make IACA more international than what it is today? I really feel like my presidency already has has really worked hard on this. Um, I've worked hard with other board members and um, tried to really, we're really trying to, to take um, international perspective into consideration with a lot of the issues that are coming up and um, and things that that the uh, decisions that we're making that will impact our future. So we've already, I feel like I've already done this, and I'm just going to try to continue to, to do more. Um, like for example, our training committee, I I asked them to try to recruit more Spanish speaking instructors, and they have. So now we have five fluent Spanish speaking instructors. The IOC has been working with the training committee to translate some of our core classes into Spanish. Um, we're teaching a lot more classes in Spanish, and um, and even last year with the uh, with the webinars that we did, um, dirt, we had Spanish speaking webinars for the conference too. So, I think we've really, um, I I've, I've worked hard to do this over the past couple of years, and we have we've we've accomplished a lot. I think, um, and I'm just going to try to continue to, to to work with my training committee to expand some of the you know, some of the training videos and stuff that we have, like with our webinar series, um, not our webinar series, sorry, with our um, webinar library, we're talking about trying to um, create uh, subtitles for some of the webinars. So we've actually expanded our training committee to try to, to hire a person to get some of those, those uh, subtitles done for some of the webinars that we have, because we think that would be helping to be more inclusive and, and pull in some of our international members if some of the resources are in, in other languages. But I think if you notice now, like most of the announcements that are going out are going out in, you know, five different languages. Um, and and we're really trying to be more inclusive. And I think actually, you know, Rachel has done a lot with us too. And she's, you know, kind of the voice who goes, oh, what about this? And we're like, oh, great. You know, like, what about this? And so we're, I, I really feel like the board that we have now is, is very cohesive and we work really well together. And I just see that continuing to kind of expand that role for um, for our international members as well. What would winning the re-election for the ISCA president mean for you? Um, I mean, everything. I love this association. I, I really want to be able to be here to see this, the strategic plan um, come to fruition. I just feel like we've invested so much time and effort in it. And I'd really like to see it through because... Um, it it means a lot to me. This was it, it was a ton of hard work um, for all all of the board and the committee chair people and everyone who was involved in the process and 
and the focus groups, everyone who took part of it, I feel like um, they really put a lot into it and they gave us their time and were willing to share their ideas with us. And um, it would just mean a lot to me to be able to continue and, and see this through. And last question, do you have any final words for our listeners? Maybe even a campaign slogan. Um, I don't really have a campaign slogan, but I hope that after listening to this podcast that our members will realize that I'm I'm an integral part of the current board and that we've really been diligent in trying to lead our association forward um, by having a, a well thought out and constructed goal. Uh, there's a good synergy amongst our group. Um, we're all really hardworking and dedicated to bettering our association. So Hopefully, uh, people will vote for me to keep the IEC on course that the membership's chosen. And um, yes, thank you for your time. And I really hope I can be reelected. Well, very good, Mary. Thank you so much for being with me today. Best of luck in the election and you be safe. Thanks so much, Jason. You too. Thank you for joining us today on Analyst Talk with Jason Alder. We hope you not only enjoyed the show, but also learned something new. For more information on our guests and information relating to today's topic, please visit our website at leapodcast.com. Special thanks to the Rough and Tumble for our theme song. For more of their music, you can visit their website at theroughandtumble.com. Also thanks to Kyle McMullen for our show logo. For more of his design, please visit his website at moderntype.com. The show is hosted, recorded, and edited by Jason Elder and written by me, Mindy. You can contact us both via the LEA podcast website. Please join us again next time as we interview another expert in this great field.